hey, welcome back to your number one source for cozy gaming and design content. I'm Nick, and today we're going to be taking a look at the venerable Swiss Army Knife. And we'll talk a bit about its history and why I love it. So, let's get started. Let's start at the beginning. Back in the late 1800s, the Swiss Army was looking for a pocket knife for their soldiers to use for maintenance on their service weapons, opening canned goods, and other knife-related needs. Notably not combat, that would be pretty silly with one of these. At the time, the knives used by the Swiss Army were made by a German company. However, the need for a different design and different functionality led the army to turn to a struggling Swiss cutlery company owned by Karl Elsner. This original Swiss army knife was very simple in comparison to those made today. It was also much different in overall design. Its functions were designed specifically for the intended purpose. So it included a short blade, a can opener, and a screwdriver secured by Carl's patented locking technology. This included a single tensioning spring used to hold the blade securely in both the closed and open position while allowing fast and simple opening and closing. The design was very different from what we would understand it to be today, with a much more bulbous and overall more organic design. The handle plates were also made from a deep black ebony wood instead of the modern synthetic plastic, because plastic wouldn't be invented for about another decade. It looks a lot like what you would think a pocket knife would look like in the 1800s, but it offered unique functionality, and again was specifically designed for the Swiss Army, and having it manufactured locally was important to the Army at the time. It also differs from the modern Swiss Army knife in that it didn't have the iconic modified Swiss coat of arms like those made today do. From there, the history is pretty straightforward. They made a bunch and people bought them because of their association with the Swiss Army and a reputation for quality and functionality. There is more to get into with their history, but this video isn't really about the specifics of that. I'm more interested in talking about their cultural impact and the knife itself as it is today. My personal first real introduction outside of seeing my dad and other adults around me use one was its prominent inclusion in MacGyver. There are probably few other shows I'm aware of that serve as better promotion for the Swiss Army Knife than MacGyver. Me and my brothers would always play around pretending to be the titular protagonist, and obviously a Swiss Army Knife was key to that character. There was something just so aspirational and cool as a young boy about always having the right tool for the job on hand. And if you didn't have the specific one you need, being able to make do with what you have. I think while I didn't get any real use out of it until fairly recently, the idea of the Swiss Army Knife and what it represents was a huge part of my development as a maker. Now, let's be clear, I think a solid amount of my interest came from the fact that I am, in fact, a man. And so I was brought up to believe that it was my role to solve problems and fix things. And while I have, for the most part, come to terms with that in what I think is a healthy way, it is worth noting that a pretty big part of my interest in this particular product comes from the social factors around what it meant to be a man when I was growing up in the US. Anything even remotely related to the army or warfare was cool, and while I think MacGyver actually did a pretty good job fighting against that, and maybe it's worth making a video at some point about in the future, I think it's important to put that particular point of bias out there for you to be aware of. Though, lest you think I'm deriding the benefits of the Swiss Army Knife, I assure you I'm not. It is a genuinely useful tool, and the sheer variety on offer from Victory Knox makes it a great option for someone like me, who often doesn't have any need for a really highly specific and specialized tool, but 
instead would benefit from a much more generalized set of tools. And they come in such a wide assortment of those tools that most people who feel the need for one are likely to find a knife to suit their needs just right. After my initial introduction in MacGyver, the next show that featured it with any real prominence that I watched was Psych. This show, about a fake psychic detective, leaned heavily into the 80s TV and movie references, so naturally the main character carried around a Swiss Army knife. Not only because his father taught him the very real benefits, but also because, like me and my brothers, he aspired to be that guy who can always get himself out of a jam with nothing more than a Swiss Army knife and a piece of bubblegum. I think the association with handiness and ingenuity is probably key to the continued success of the Swiss Army knife and its enduring legacy worldwide. There aren't many places you can go where people wouldn't know what a Swiss Army knife is, and it's even become a rather universal shorthand for someone who's useful for a lot of different things or knows about a wide variety of topics. Saying someone is a Swiss Army knife is akin to saying they're a jack of all trades, and I think for people like me, that comes as a huge compliment. However, again, I don't want you to think I'm saying that this is all hype and marketing. Far from it, in fact. Most other knives that don't essentially just rip off the form factor of the Swiss Army knife are either far too anemic with their offerings, like only giving you a long and a short blade, or far too ambitious with their offerings. And that was my experience with the Leatherman. While I'm sure the Leatherman multi-tools are useful for many people, and I know a lot of people do genuinely really love them, I personally find them to be far too bulky and clunky to carry around with me every day. I personally don't want to deal with a holster on my belt every day, and while having a nice sturdy pair of pliers is certainly useful in certain situations, I actually don't really find myself in those situations nearly as often as I thought I might. Also, and I don't know if this is something I've done wrong, or if it's a defective unit or what, but this Leatherman that I attempted to daily drive, its screws have started to come loose here. And I can't just tighten them up and crank down on it because then it's way too tight to open. I could put some Loctite on it, but I feel like I shouldn't really have to be tinkering and fixing the thing that I'm supposed to be able to rely on to, you know, do the fixing. And to be clear, I really appreciate the choice that Leatherman have made in making their tools user serviceable. That's something I can't say about the Swiss Army knife. I think it's just that I personally don't really want to deal with the maintenance on a pocket knife. I also found, and this is also the case with my brother's Leatherman, that they do have a tendency to rust. And I don't even really use it in wet environments but whatever steel they're using doesn't seem to be particularly resistant to corrosion. And I, I don't find that that really instills confidence in me personally. I'm not trying to dump on the Leatherman. I know it works great for a lot of people. I'm just saying that for me, I didn't love my time with it. And for what I need a knife for, I much prefer the smaller, sleeker, and simpler design of the Swiss Army knife. That's the other thing with the Leatherman. Its construction is incredibly complex. There are all kinds of springs and screws holding everything in place, and while all of that lets them add a lot more functions that you can't really get from a much more simple design, I don't think I personally would take the decreased durability that comes with that complexity. Like I said, mine started falling apart quite literally, and I didn't even use it heavily. And I think a lot of what led to that is the overall complexity because there's a lot more potential points of failure, any one of them going wrong can cause the knife to malfunction. Whereas with the Swiss Army knife, the only component you need to rely on is that tension spring and maybe the pivot point of the blade, but if that breaks, you probably just need to get a new knife anyway. One of the things I will say in the Leatherman's favor is that it's pretty disability friendly. It's designed in such a way to make it possible to open most of the tools with one hand, and, with a bit of practice, I think it would be pretty simple to learn to open the pliers and use them single-handedly as well. Now, to be clear, it's not an accessible product. That's certainly not what they're going for, and it isn't marketed that way at all. In comparison to the classic Swiss Army knife, however, it's worlds ahead. With the Swiss Army knife, you need two very dexterous hands in order to get at any of the tools. And, even as somebody who has full use of both of my hands, I still find it a bit of a chore to get at some of the tools. Due to that trademark spring we talked about earlier, 
the blades and whatnot certainly stay in place nice and securely, which is a great thing if you want your knife not to open up by accident in your pocket, but because of how sleek and pocketable they were designed to be, you need a pretty high deck stat in order to open it. I had a really great viewer let me know some of the methods used to test the accessibility of different tools, like covering your hands in oil and trying to use it, or tying two or more fingers together and oiling your hands, or trying to use it with only one hand, and many, many, many more. And even without testing, I can guarantee you this would fail all of those. You need to be one of the standard, able-bodied people this was designed for, otherwise you will not be able to use it. So that's obviously a pretty big negative for a lot of people. And I think ardent defenders may say, well yeah, but it's a Swiss army knife. You can't join the army if you're disabled. And to that I would say, come on. Sure, it's called a Swiss army knife, but that's just because of its origin. If we were to call it what it is, we should probably be calling it a Swiss civilian knife. Now, this is a product for the every person, and they wouldn't have had the business success that they had without targeting that audience. You can buy an engraved version at nearly every gift shop in the world, for God's sake. And this is far from the military tool that it once was. Though despite any shortcomings it has from an objective evaluator perspective, I love it. I love the classic simple design, the iconic formal and chromatic elements, and I just noticed when I was researching this video uh, that the way that they made the cutout here for the screwdriver is a subtle callback to the original model 1890 uh, with its small nubbin cutout here. It's not some miracle tool, nothing is, and if I'm being honest, a lot of my love for it comes from what it symbolizes more than what it actually does. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. This isn't a product that just markets itself as dependable and reliable. It actually is. If I really wanted to, I could just buy one and be done and never give them any more of my money for the rest of my life because I genuinely do believe that as long as I don't neglect it, this will last most of that time. And in today's world, that seems to be a rather hard thing to find in the products that we buy. So many places market themselves as luxury, high-end quality pieces of design history, but they expect you to buy a whole new one in another year or two. I'm looking at you, Apple. And so knowing I can buy it once and they won't really make any major improvements or design changes that'll make me want to upgrade is a really nice feeling. But that's it for today's video. I hope you had a good time and maybe you learned something along the way. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.